Devin Haney, known as Dream, is called a follower of Floyd Mayweather as his boxing is impeccable. His stiff jabs and precise right crosses make his opponents look like amateurs. By the age of 20, the guy was earning millions of dollars and had created his own brand. He became the youngest ever undisputed world champion in lightweight history. Today, we will tell you the story of a young boxer who is just gaining momentum to soar to the top of boxing. Devin appeared on your TV screens much earlier than you think. Back in the early 2000s, a young Haney was taking on the bouts of stars during those times like Zab Judah. The boxing path seemed inevitable for the youngster. He first put on gloves at the age of 7 and trained under the guidance of his father. Haney made his way to star status through the amateur bouts against the best guys in America. In the ring, Devin won 138 fights and only lost 8 times to his opponents. He won the country's championship twice in the 57 and 60 kilogram categories. Interestingly, within these tournaments, Haney crossed paths twice with Ryan Garcia. At both times, he convincingly won by decision. According to Garcia, he fought Haney six times and their score is three and three. But the fact remains, Haney was stronger in important tournaments. Devin didn't aim to become an Olympic champion. The Haney family understood that big money and fame could only be found in professional boxing. However, according to US laws, one can only fight professionally at 18, and Devin was only 17 at the time. So his team found a loophole. Mexico allowed debuts at 16. Haney went to the Latino community to kickstart his successful career. Within the first year and a half, Davin fought 10 times in Mexico, and upon reaching adulthood, he began fighting in his native country, America. The level of opposition was not that high. But even opponents of such caliber could seriously test the prospect and provide valuable experience. It's not fair to think that Haney was in a sheltered environment. He prepared for his fights at Floyd Mayweather's gym. This gym was known for its tough sparring sessions among prospects, and Davin went through many uncompromising rounds with the best fighters. There were also clips surfacing from those years showing Haney receiving tough lessons from the more experienced Javonta Davis. Devin proved to be a smart guy. He not only improved as a boxer, but also had many lessons with Mayweather about how to build a career wisely. Floyd was an idol for young guys. 50 wins, no losses, no serious damage throughout his career, and millions of dollars in his accounts. The best advice Haney received from his senior colleague was to work for himself and not to sign shady contracts with promoters. Thus, by the age of 20, Devin had his own promotional company. Haney's first significant bout came in a matchup for the regional North American IBF title against Mason Menard who held a record of 33 wins to 2 losses. Despite his young age, Devin delivered a boxing lesson to his compatriot. He gets hit on the chin some day. He punched faster, harder, controlled the ring excellently, and ultimately forced Minard to surrender after the ninth round. We're, we're stopping. Hey! It's worth noting that Haney had a higher knockout percentage at a young age because mid-level opponents couldn't withstand such talent. Many experts noted that for his age of 20, Devin was incredibly smart. The problem with most prospects is that they rush, wanting to knock out their opponent quickly and prove something to the audience. Haney meticulously dismantled opponents, not chasing knockouts. Sometimes fights went the full distance, but his dominance lasted from the first to last second. Devin fought every few months, gradually stepping up the level of opposition. In May 2019, he unleashed a brutal knockout against Antonio Moran. Refuting skeptics' arguments about his lack of punching power, the long overhand right would later become the boxer's signature move. 
several significant victories led the young prospect to fight for the interim WBC title in the 61 kilogram weight category. Devon's opponent was the Russian Zao Abdulayev, who held a record of 11 wins to zero losses. For the Dagestani fighter, this bout marked a new stage in his career, as defeating Devon would make him a big star. The American lightweight moved easily on his feet and worked on anticipation. Zao looked stiff, unable to execute multi-hit combinations. Devon effortlessly found his range and began to capitalize on his speed advantage. By the third round, it seemed like a master was fighting a novice in the ring. Haney punched at will and read his opponent like a book. Devon decided not to delay the presentation of the new bout. In certain attacks, Haney resembled a young Floyd. After the fourth round, the Russians' corner refused to continue the match. This decision helped preserve the Russians' health. One of Devon's powerful right shots broke Zao's facial bone. At the age of 20, the American boxer nicked the name Dream became a world champion, albeit with the interim title for now. In the fight, Haney didn't receive a single scratch, so he returned to the ring just two months later. This time, he was set to test the undefeated Alfredo Santiago. The Dominican fighter hit the canvas in the fifth round, but didn't allow himself to get knocked out. To hold on, but it's coming back with uppercuts, left hooks, dropping Santiago. However, it didn't make things easier for him. Haney dominated him throughout the night and secured every round on the judges' scorecards. The ropes. Appears to be in a bit of trouble. Yes. In this bout, Davin already held the full-fledged WBC champion status and conducted his first defense. Despite the easy victory, Haney suffered a serious shoulder injury and required surgery. Due to a year-long layoff, major fights were postponed. The best option for a comeback turned out to be the Cuban veteran Yuri Okis Gamboa. He no longer posed a threat but was still known to the public. Hurt him. Good left hand to the body, right to the chair. Devon appeared focused and set himself the goal of dominating Gamboa in every round. The American controlled all 12 fights but left fans with an unpleasant taste by not actively seeking to finish the Cuban. Haney resembles Floyd Mayweather in the sense that he never panders to the audience. He can't be persuaded to fight in a different style by the crowd's cheers. Devon understood that a zero on his record would give him more prospects than a flashy but risky fight. But in one aspect, the fans were right. If you're a champion, you can't fight unknown opponents. In May 2021, Haney stepped into the ring against former lightweight champion Jorge Linares. The peak of the Venezuelan's career had passed by then, with his final act being a bout against Vasily Lumachenko. It seemed that this version of Linares was unable to pose a threat to the rising prestige of Mayweather. But we love the majesty of boxing for its surprises. The beginning of the fight turned out to be quite extraordinary. Haney jabbed a lot and kept his distance. However, it immediately caught the eye that the aging Linares hardly lagged behind the champion in speed. If Devon's previous opponents tried to catch him with one blow, then Jorge worked in combinations and didn't worry about counter-attacks. Nevertheless, there was a slight advantage on the American side, and he led the fight towards a unanimous decision. Linares disagreed with this scenario and made adjustments. After a tough Venezuelan bombardment, Devon staggered, but the end of round bell saved him from trouble. Not even a minute's break was enough to recover. Haney decided to give away the final rounds to avoid falling under Jorge's hammer again. Linares took the final four rounds and significantly narrowed the gap in the score. Two 
two judges saw the Americans' advantage with a four-point difference, while the third only by two. Haney's hard-fought victory sparked a new wave of criticism. It turned out he could be shaken and outperformed in the later rounds. Adding fuel to the fire was his next performance as the inspiring champion. He defended his WBC title against Joseph Diaz, a talented boxer, but clearly undersized and with weak punches for the lightweight division. Diaz peaked at 57 and 59 kgs in his career, but in this new division, there were much bigger guys. Surprisingly, the scenario of the fight with Linares repeated itself. Devin started the match excellently, utilizing the advantage of the long distance and landing sharp jabs. Joseph imposed an uncomfortable pace on Haney with his pressing. Exactly where he Got him again! Look at Diaz being the boss here in the fourth! And while the champion breezed through the first half of the fight, in the second half, he had to work harder and even retreat in some instances. Of course, no one doubted Devin's victory, but more was expected against the smaller Diaz. And that's gonna do it! After all, the American called himself the best lightweight, and in a division teeming with monsters, words needed to be backed up with action. While Haney was churning out defenses of the WBC title, serious upheavals were happening in the lightweight division. The aging boxing phenomenon Vashili Lumachenko sensationally lost his bouts to the bold prospect Teofimo Lopez, who, in turn, was defeated in a close fight by George Cambosis. And three out of four titles ended up in the hands of not the strongest boxer in the weight class. To Haney's immense fortune, Lumachenko decided to fly to the fight with Kambosis due to personal reasons, presenting him with the chance of a lifetime to become the undisputed world champion. Devin headed to Australia to make history. The main problem with fights in the land of kangaroos is the judging. Once before, Manny Pacquiao was blatantly robbed there in a fight against Jeff Horn. Haney couldn't afford to tolerate the judge's misconduct, so he tried to land more precise and harder blows than the Australian in every round. Short-armed Kambosis was accustomed to penetrating the mid-range and inside, but this time Devin's relentless jab halted his flanking advances. Each time, George ran into a stiff left straight, and for emphasis, the American occasionally add combinations. In the one-sided contest, the judges managed to give Kambosis a whole four rounds, but it wasn't enough to rob Haney. At 23 years old, the American matched Lopez's record, becoming the youngest undisputed champion in the history of the lightweight division. George's team included a clause in the contract stipulating a mandatory rematch. Devin was fine with it entirely, as he had earned record-breaking money for the duology with the Australian. At the weigh-in, Haney appeared larger than his usual self, noticeably improving his physical condition. In the ring, we witnessed an upgraded version of Devon, who worked more aggressively and didn't hesitate to close the distance convenient for Kambosis. George significantly lagged behind in speed and power and took more damage. Haney attempted to intensify his attack several times, but the Australian's sturdy head endured it all. And this time, even the judges had to agree with Devin's total dominance. He just let those hands go, switch up the cadence, throw combinations instead of one or two hard shots. On the official scorecards, he won almost every round and outclassed George. Haney's recognition as the undisputed world champion brought him acknowledgement from experts. The Ring magazine included the American in the top 10 rankings of best boxers regardless of weight class. However, fans still remained dissatisfied, and there were reasons for that, as the best lightweights were considered to be Javonta Davis and Vasily Lumachenko. Tank was under the promotion of Al Heyman, whereas a fight with the Ukrainian could have been organized with just one phone call. Lumachenko accepted the young champion's challenge for May 2023. At the time, Vashili had lost his titles and his leadership in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. 
Due to injuries and a complex political situation, Loma's number of appearances sharply declined. For Vashili himself, there was a huge motivation to finally fulfill his dream and become the undisputed world champion. The bulky Ahaney surged forward, attempting to overwhelm the smaller veteran. But thanks to his footwork, Vashili found advantageous angles and counter-attacked the American. Davin pressed the gas in the second round, but then was outplayed again by the Ukrainian Grand Master. There it is. Keep trying to close the distance and, and make Devin Haney. Haney initiated clinches multiple times to slow down his opponent's pace. Tuck his defense really tight and turn to the side and use angles like Loma does. The dirty boxing tactics worked and Loma slowed down in the following three rounds, which Devin took advantage of by attacking the body fiercely. The American even attempted a takedown, but Vashili defended himself with experience. By the midpoint of the fight, Haney himself started to decline functionally, and Lumachenko spun his carousel. Oh! Devin continued to believe in the power of his body punches, but the crowd erupted after Vashili's flurry of strikes. The Ukrainian managed to take the end game in a bright manner, reminding everyone of his young version. Seems like the younger, bigger man. The ultimate victory of the challenger was unquestionable. However, the judging panel unanimously scored the fight in the favor of Haney. Such a decision caused a disapproving buzz in the arena. In the locker room, Lumachenko couldn't hold back tears after a call from his son. The judging didn't help a Bob Arum keep Devin on top rank. The American boxer headed to the lair of British promoter Eddie Hearn and the most logical target became the WBC super lightweight champion Regis Progre. Haney gained 2.5 kilograms to move into the new weight class, but even there, he looked significantly larger than Progre's. From the first round, Haney put his opponent on the back foot with jabs and punched on the counter. Any movement from Progres provoked flurries from Devon. By the third round, Regis kissed the canvas with the fifth point of contact. In recent years, Haney didn't throw convincing powerful shots but Progres was tossed around the ring by them. Devin addressed all endurance issues and appeared in the new weight class as the best version of himself. The outcome of such a domination was a victory with a 13-point difference. It cannot be called anything but humiliation. By the age of 35, Haney conquered two weight divisions and climbed to the top seven best boxers in the world. But his journey is just beginning. Right now, we see the best version of Devon, which is evolving from fight to fight. On the horizon for the young champion are numerous formidable opponents who can give him trouble. But it is in such fights that greatness is forged. On April 20th, Haney will share the ring with Ryan Garcia and try to settle a long-standing debate about who among them is stronger. 